children good day so this is my ICT channel where you can learn all your ICT syllabuses from grade 6 up to A levels in local syllabus English main right so I will start the series from grade 6 and today I will be discussing chapter 1 so like that there will be for each chapter there will be videos and for workbook activities there will be separate videos so you can follow my channel at your home at your pace free of charge right so you you don't have to go to tuition separately or if you miss something from the school you can gain additional information through my channel so please subscribe my channel and uh, you can click that bell icon so you can get all the notifications when I release new videos. So if you have any questions, please do comment. So I will try my best to answer your questions. And uh, if I can improve something on my end, please comment that as well. It may be a parent's comment, it may be a kid's comment. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's good for me, right? So, okay, let's start our first chapter, Importance of Content. So this is the basic thing you are starting now as ICT. So you should know what is a computer, right? So computer is a is an electronic device. That means you need electricity to work with it. For example, it's like a TV, and uh, you need, uh, for example, it's like uh, uh, your washing machine, your microwave, right? It has advanced features, yes, but it's an electronic device. And remember, it can fulfill your different needs and can do different complex tasks very efficiently and accurately based on the provided instructions. So, computer can work for a long time with the same speed, with the same accuracy. It's not like humans, right? Humans, we, are, we will get tired after some time. So, our efficiency will be less, our productivity will be less. But computers are machines, so they will continue working uh, as it is from the beginning to the end right so these are the functions of a computer so when it comes to functions there are basically three components input process and output right input means you are entering data and instruction to the computer for example using your keyboard your mouse you can input your data for example if you type something on a document typing is the inputting data Right? and it will process in the back end right and then finally it will be given that uh, processed information or processed data as an output using the output devices like monitor maybe a printer you can listen to music so that is the output right so uh, this is the basic functions of a computer for example if i explain this with a real world scenario think in a classroom there are four students right so each students will have marks for each subject. So those are data, right? From that data itself, we cannot do any decision. But if we process it, for example, you take average of each student and you first you get the totals of each student, you get the average and you uh, sort it according to the sending order and then you find the class first who is having the highest uh, value for their marks, total marks, right? Ah, that is the information. It's the process thing, right? So that one we can use for decision making. We can select the class uh, first and we'll give a price in the price giving. So that is the decision making part. So normally charts, graphs will represent the information because they are processed and then they are represented. Then we are going to talk about significant features of a computer speed and efficiency so uh, the computer can do any task with a given within a given very short period time of time right they can perform billions of tasks in a second and when it comes to accuracy accuracy if you provide correct instructions and data definitely you will get correct information so make sure you give the correct instruction correct data so you can accept uh, accurate data, accurate information. Reliability and consistency. So always you can rely, that means you can depend on your computer process and output. 
it's not like humans now when it comes to humans sometimes uh, based on their like ignorance or based on their uh, tiredness like that they will uh, not behave in the same way they are going to be a consistent output sometimes with humans so we can re not rely 100% on humans actually sometimes but when it comes to computer we can uh, ensure that there will be a consistent output if you give the same input again and again for example if you think, uh, think about a simple calculator if you give the same input 2 plus 2 2 plus 2 oh, you give millions of uh, addition questions the answers will be always correct with the computer but with a human student it will be different sometimes we will do mistakes and uh, this is another one storage capacity that means computer can store data and information it can be internal uh, storage devices like your hard disk in the system unit or it can be external devices like series dvds and right so when it comes to the cost yes initial cost is very high because when you want to buy a computer or internet connections wi-fi routers you may have to spend some additional uh, initial cost may be high but when it comes to the maintenance repair cost may be lesser uh, so you only have to pay for your electricity electricity and internet bills only so normally there won't be a lot of repairs and the last point is intelligence right so computer can act according to the given instruction but remember it cannot think and make decisions it will all depend on your ins given instructions now human can think and act right that's why humans uh, are not consistent also sometimes because they will act in different different scenarios in different different manner but for a computer if you give the particular instructions uh, even in artificial intelligence ai robots and all we humans have to give, give the relevant tools and instructions then only it will work according so computer cannot think and do something then we are going to talk about the embedded computers what do you mean by embedded computers is any device if we have a digital interface then it is considered as a embedded computers mainly now most of the houses will have a washing machine right so they will have a digital interface like you can give how many rinses you should do how many spins you should do how much water level you have to fill so those things you can give as a button fixer so they are having a digital interface if you have seen a microwave oven you can give it give some timer like two minutes one minutes like that so those are having digital interfaces right so these are considered as embedded computer so the, the these devices will perform particular tasks with a given computer program so all these uh, mobile devices washing machines uh, modern vehicles where they have navigators not only on navigate, even brake system sometimes it's a uh, digital uh, like the embedded computers are controlling a uh, modern television smart uh, the televisions and all so these are having uh, embedded computer systems in it okay let's go and identify the components of a computer right so in this computer the basic things are the monitor or the display right uh, and then we have the system unit right uh, so in a laptop you cannot see the external system unit separate like a box like thing but it's in built right and you have a keyboard and a mouse so this is a basic desktop computer and in addition to these things you can have a speaker you can have a microphone you may have a headset connected or you may have an internet router to connect to internet so those are the basic components which can be seen of a computer so then we are going to talk about the hardware, hardware components of a computer hardware means you can touch it right tangible stuff right so you can touch it you can see it right so these hardware systems we divided into mainly six categories the first thing is the input device says that means these devices are used to enter data and instruction to the computer 
so mouse mouse is a pointing device right you can select some item from the screen you can click on it you can double click on it you can drag it here and there so mouse is an input device keyboard you can type letters from it right not only letters we have numbers we have others uh, and, uh, symbols uh, there are lots of keys in it right so you can give an input to the computer microphone you can talk now while i'm doing this uh, video i'm using a microphone that's why my voice is uh, clearly coming to you web camera now if you use a desktop computer to do the video conferencing to take a photo of you you need a web camera separately attached but when it comes to a laptop you don't know what is a laptop it's like similar to the desktop computer but it's very portable all these uh, keyboard system you need and all even you don't need a mouse there and uh, you don't need a separate mouse for that so that is a this uh, using the touchpad directly you can give the input rather than using a mouse right so that's a laptop it's a portable version so in the laptop the web camera the camera itself is also inbuilt so you don't need a separate web camera and even the microphone is inbuilt for the laptop so it's a, like a portable version of the computer and normally laptops are more expensive than the desktop computers barcode reader have you seen a barcode reader definitely yes if you have gone to a supermarket in the counters when you put your goods on the uh, counter this uh, girl or the boy the salesperson in there will read each product using the barcode reader right and then comes the scan so scan will help you to transfer a physical document or physical image into a digital image where you can save it on the computer where you can view it on using your monitor right? it's con converting it to a digital then come the output devices so output devices are used to get the process data or the information out from the computer right so we can think about computer monitors printers speakers and multimedia project computer monitors nowadays earlier days we had the crt like big uh, units like tv also earlier days very big very heavy very uh, large right but nowadays we have LCDs and LED screens for computers as well as for the TVs. So they are very thin and very portable versions, right? And uh, remember, when you come, when you talk about the computer devices, there are devices which provide soft copies, soft copy uh, output as well as hard copy output. Soft copy means you cannot touch intangible uh, version of output. For example, in the monitor. In the with the projector, you cannot touch the output. But when it comes to a printer, it gives you tangible output. It's on the paper. You can touch the paper, right? Then come the central processing unit. So this is actually inside your uh, uh, system unit. We call it as a processor as well. So uh, it's actually. Um, or with the motherboard right so when it comes to motherboard if you can see a motherboard it will be helpful you to understand what is this so all these ram the processors and all these um, hard drive connectors those things are can any of these devices are either directly or indirectly connected to the motherboard of the system right so motherboard is very important and it's very expensive as well we cannot see it from outside but sometimes if you see a broken system unit and all you can uh, find this motherboard and uh, check out there are a lot of slots kind of thing a lot of circuits you need so, so you can have an investigation there then comes the main memory so this is the device which you use to store data information instruction temporary we call it ram we call it main memory we call it primary memory or the random access memory. So what do you mean by temporary is like if you switch off the electricity, it's gone. It's a volatile memory. Right? So for example, if you're typing a Word document and you shut down the computer without saving it, 
so that whole document is gone right so yeah word, word will uh, catch up to some amount, like we'll have automatic saving in the end but usually it will be gone right but uh, if you save it what will happen is from the ram it will be saved into your hard drive right so when the next day you open that particular document from the hard drive again it will be transferred to the ram that's how you can view it okay so ram is a temporary memory right if you have a uh, more uh, ram means more uh, speed kind of thing right and you may have another thing rom it's not mentioned in your textbook and rom is basically storing all your boot up instructions to so computer needs to boot up right when you switch on computer comes up so the computer should know what to do right so that boot up instructions are given in the rom and it's manufactured level it's there so it's not a volatile memory it's not a temporary memory it's a permanent memory so that is rom read only memory you can only read Right, you cannot uh, store anything into there. Then comes the storage devices. So we use uh, storage devices to uh, store data, information, and instructions. So it can be internal storage, like the internal hard disk, which is inside your system unit. And external storage devices are portable stuff, like you can uh, move it here and there you can insert it you can store some data you can give it to one of your friends like that right so cds dvds blu-ray so cd has a lesser storage capacity than a dvd dvd has a lesser storage capacity than a blu-ray so blu-ray can store more right and we have external hard disk sometimes external hard disks are there now two terabytes right huge volume of uh, data can be stored and pen drives you may have seen pen drives 2 gb 4 gb 16 gb 30 gb 32 gb like that there are different uh, storage capacities then comes the communication device actually these are network devices because uh, communication devices means you want to exchange your information data process uh, data instruction from one place to another right for that you should be connected to a network We'll be talking these things later as well. What is a network? What is internet? And all. But these devices are basically for communication purposes. So normally, net network interface card is coming as inbuilt, right, in your system unit itself. And modern routers, Wi-Fi routers, you may have seen these uh, items. And one more thing, I want to explain: wired and wireless. Any idea? Wired means always a wire is connected. Now, not only communication devices, we have uh, uh, even mouse keyboards. Now we have wireless. That means you don't need a wire to connect it to the computer, right? So you can move that device here and there, right? So it's not wired, not connected to using a wire. So that's the difference between wired and wireless devices, right? And when it's come to the software, now up to now we learn about hardware. Right, hard tangible things which can touch, which you can see, uh, physical components. But software you cannot see, you cannot touch. It's intangible. And the software is a set of programs designed to execute some task, right, by using a computer. And uh, other than the hardware and software, there's someone for user, the person who operates the computer. And me are users. Now you are watching this YouTube uh, video using the computer. So you are a user. So I am doing these lectures in a computer. So I am a user. So remember, uh, there are a lot of job opportunities come because have arise because of the computer. Now, there are software engineers, software architects, uh, graphic designers, DB operators, the DBMS database operators, graphic designers, a uh, lot of people in this industry. So though all these are new job opportunities which were not there 30 years back. 30 years we had doctors and lawyers like those were the uh, teachers, those were the occupations we had. But nowadays we have a lot of new job opportunities with very good salary income 
so you can, if you learn these subjects well, definitely it will be useful for you in the future. So a software or the applications, you may have the, heard these words apps, right? So these are helping you to do different tasks. For example, in Miss Pearl, it's a word processing software. You can type letters, computer games, definitely. At least a card game you may have play, played using a computer games. Video editing softwares, painting softwares like MS Paint. You can draw things, right? And media players to listen to uh, music, to watch a video, to watch a film, you will use these media players. So these are different kinds of softwares you can have. And the final uh, item we have discussed is the application of computers. Where are the computers are used? Yes, it's everywhere. In almost all the sectors are now using computers. So these are very basic sectors they which they have discussed, but there are more into this, right? So uh, we use computers in com schools, banks, agriculture fields, factories, hospitals, airports nowadays. It's in everywhere. That's right. Even in a supermarket, these devices are there, right? So, first thing is the school, right? So, in a school, you may have seen there's an office, right? These people are doing some administrative work. Yes, definitely those things can be done using the computer, but that's the one part. Other than that, computers can be used for the learning purpose. Now, what I am doing and you are doing is distance learning. I teach, you learn, the teacher and student are not in the same place, but it's kind of a distance learning. Those things can be done using computer. Even at the classroom, a teacher can use the computer and present something. She can show you a video clip. Okay, she can show you some presentation on subject matters, right? Rather than in using the conventional blackboards and whiteboards and books, teachers can use computers to teach. Not only that, students can use computer to learn, right? Especially by accessing internet, you can gain a lot of information, additional information for you. For example, when we were schooling, if they asked to prepare a booklet about maybe some historical event or maybe some festival like that, we, or maybe about a country, we have to find information in the harder path. For example, we have to contact a teacher or contact an elder or elder student or we have to find some books from the libraries. We have to find magazines like that. It was not easy. But for you, it's uh, actually all the information is on your fingertips if you have internet connection, right? You can just Google it and get all the information, prepare the booklet at home itself without going anywhere, right? That's the importance of internet, right? You can learn a lot of good things, a lot of uh, like educational things using the internet. So don't use it in the bad way, right? Next sector is banking, right? Yes, you may have not gone to ATM, but you may have gone with your parents. You have seen an ATM, right? Your parents may be withdrawing money. They are depositing money. They are transferring money from one account to another. They see the balance of their accounts, right? Why they can do it is all these branches of the commercial banks are connected, right? All the banks are connected with each other, right? For example, if you have an account in HNB, Hatton National Bank, still you can withdraw money from a commercial bank, right? Why they are all connected, right? So that is using the computer networks. And you may have used your electronic cards like credit cards, debit cards to settle bills when you, you purchase goods to settle your utility bills, right? You may have heard about internet banking, mobile bank, especially in this corona season, right? Most of this online stuff uh, were came into play online buying and selling, right? Online e-commerce things, this year, internet banking, mobile banking, everything has been come into play. Then comes the hospital, right? Before going to the hospital, definitely in your homes, you will have a digital thermometer, right? 
So they have a digital interface to show how much temperature you have. So these are having embedded computer devices. I'm not talking about the uh, these other uh, thermometer which has mercury in it. Not that one. This is a digital thermometer. This is a bit expensive than the other one, but uh, this is having a embedded computer system. And uh, in ICUs, in operation theaters, even at the reception, you have computers, right? That girl will check all the things using the computer and tell you if that doctor is available, when, when that doctor is available, what is the number you can get. So even using these online um, services, e-channeling is there, right? You don't have to go to the hospital itself to, to uh, book a doctor, right? Go to the particular doctor uh, to uh, do that, right? So it's very uh, easily available for you. Then comes the factories, right? So human labor is now replaced by the robots, right? So uh, especially in factories like automobile factories, this is available. So uh, most of the things like in automobile industry, they are done using robots. Even eye surgery sometimes are done by uh, robots because they are very accurate and uh, precise. Right? So remember, because of robots, yes, uh, sometimes jobs will be, will be lost because most people will be willing to go with the robots because they don't demand for promotion, they don't demand for uh, other facilities they will just work without getting hired so that is more easy for the employers okay then the last sector is agriculture yes in sri lanka we don't have this much improved in uh, using a good company device in the agriculture but when it comes to the foreign countries especially like uh, this japan and all these countries are using these things now in the picture also can you see that uh, water supply is done using a drone all the things are computerized, right? So even harvesting, weeding, or giving the water supply, these things are done using the computers. Now I watched one of the videos in that one. They uh, they pluck, I don't remember, some berries, strawberries or something like that. So all the things are done using machines. They uh, pluck the fruit, they uh, separate it into uh, different packs and pack it. And then the final thing is the only one human is there. Uh, if there is unwanted things, he will quickly remove. Only for that, there is one person. But all the things is like automated process, right? So this is how you can use the computers. So this is the basic summary we already discussed. My videos are very less time, so you can quickly watch these things before your exam and get really good marks. Okay. So the main task of or the main functions of the computer are input, process, and output. And there are input devices, we talk about output devices, communication devices, central processing unit, it's the brain of the computer, and memory, right? So these devices are main parts of the computer. And there's software definitely needed to operate, and those will do different tasks for the, of the user. And computers use day in day-to-day -day activities, right? It's used in everywhere almost. So, uh, and they are talking about the embedded computer systems, which can be seen in smartphones, modern televisions, and washing machines, and all. Right. So, this is the basic summary of the chapter. It's a very easy chapter, and uh, I am not uh, using any presentation because I could have easily do it, right? But I didn't go for that because I am using your own textbook. So, you can see a link on top of the video. So, you can go there. And download this book. This is freely available book in from the government side. So you can download it, or all of you may have this textbook with you. So the, I'm using your textbook to explain this, so it's very easy for your references, right? So thank you very much for watching this video. So I will meet you with the uh, next video, uh, which will be talking about the chapter two. Thank you.